fellow Southern Cameroonians, fellow Ambazonian, this is Capo Daniel, your civil liberty activist. On this show, the No Coney Talk Show. Today we are having a very special edition of the No Coney Talk Show with the title Haiti Solution Reboot or Reload, a tribute to the Godfather, one of the strongest Amber fighters that I've known, somebody who believe in the vision of the Haiti solution and somebody who have actively engaged in the Haiti solution. So today I want to pay tribute to our late Amber boy, our late Amber fighters, uh, the Godfather, who had implemented and was a believer of the Haiti solution. So once more, ladies and gentlemen, you're all welcome to this special edition in which we have a very rich uh, material to, to, to give you today. Just give me a, mo a moment. Uh, how, did, how did this happen? Uh, give me a moment, please. Sorry for that. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, fellow Ambazonian, this is Capo Daniel, your civil liberty activist, coming to you today with this live show, Facebook interactive platform of Eugene Yufoka and Capo Daniel. It's a joint platform where we advocate for specific things in the struggle for the restoration of the British Southern Cameroon. I am your civil liberty activist looking out for you. And today in the No Connie Talk Show, we have uh, a, a show titled The Haiti Solution Reload, a tribute to the Godfather, an amber boy, a believer in the Haiti Solution, somebody who had implemented the Haiti Solution. Unfortunately, he died. So we have been under some pressure and we have done some research. We are going to launch the, the Haiti Solution initiative again. And uh, because we're supposed to launch it on Saturday, but because of so many developing issues in our struggle, we decided to put it on hold. So today, I am still probably going to put it on hold, but I am going to give at least a prelude. Sorry. I'm going to give at least an idea, try to find time to drop some issues regarding the Haiti solution. But I'm going to focus primarily on specific issues that are hot topic that I need to address. And things that we have been heavily involved during the week. So ladies and gentlemen, I will invite you to share the link for a more interactive presentation as well as, um, as traditionally we are going to play our national anthem. I'm going to invite you to participate, to honor our flag and pay allegiance to our flag and allegiance to our country. Put Ambazonia first. After that, we are going to play a music by John Menang to welcome everybody. That will be a time where I will be greeting every participant, any follower, any visitor on this platform. So please, when during that moment, you can drop a line of where you are coming from, your community, for me to say, say shout, out, shout out to you. And if you want me to say shout out to any other person else, you can as well uh, uh, say so. I will do it at that time. After that, I'm going to go straight into our presentation. Try to make it as brief as possible. It is about 3 a.m. in Hong Kong time and about uh, 8 p.m. in Ambazonia time. And in Europe, it should be almost the same. So ladies and gentlemen, fellow Ambazonians, you are highly welcome to this show and advocacy platform. Join me as we sing our national anthem in preparation to our, our show for tonight. We the Ambazonians pledge our loyalties. Praises to our Savior who granted us our freedom. Allegiance to the hero who bore this land with their blood. From glory to glory, we rise to never to fall. Here in a nation flowing with milk and honey. Glory, glory, glory to the Father for making you a nation, a joy forevermore. Ambazonia, land of freedom, 
You shall live in plenty, meet in our need. And your children shall be like the stars above. The most high God being the watchman of this nation. Ambazonia, land of freedom. You shall live in plenty, meet in our need. And your children shall be like the stars above. The most high God being the watchman of this nation. The most high God, the God of all creation, being the watchman of this nation. Ambazonia. Not only a dream, but a reality of our territory, the Southern Cameroons. So we are advocating and we are fighting. We are fighting for survival. As a people, we are fighting for survival as a nation. Last week, we saw the incident in Biem, where our, nine of our young men were slaughtered, massacred in broad daylight. You look at the pictures, you saw the young guy. His name is, Bo, I think it's a, is it Bozang? Or oh, I forgot his name. He was staring at the eyes of the camera. While the Bulu soldiers, they looked down on him. The mad dogs, they executed him in cold blood. Cold blood. We are fighting for survival. We are fighting. We are resisting colonization. We are resisting annexation. We are resisting a union that is being forced upon us that does not work for us. So, ladies and gentlemen, that was our national anthem. I invite you now to share the link for a more interactive presentation. I'm going to play music as our tradition to welcome every participant, be it visitor, follower, or friend on this Facebook platform. So the song will, is a song from John Menang, which I have chosen today. I, I think it has some theme that is related to what I have to say. We just have so much to present. So ladies and gentlemen, it's time for me to welcome you. You can introduce yourself, where you're coming from. You can drop your just the location. I'm going to give you a shout out. As well as uh, you can also drop a name of somebody you want me to give a shout out. So ladies and gentlemen, it's our time before we get into our presentation for tonight. You're all highly welcome. Shake me up, shake me down, shake me up. <laughs> you are all highly welcome. Abu Free, the Amber Panda Lady, you are welcome. Shake me down. Ekema Johnson, there is hope. Oh. When there is life, there is hope. Oh. When there are ups and downs. So. Life is safe and there is hope. Anyway, there are always problems, so you can never try everybody. You know, I was thinking of a song. I was down, going through the pain of our struggle, and I said, let me choose a song that will give me happiness and inspire joy and strength to our people. There is hope, eh? Lovet from Kataya, welcome. There is hope. Eh? Life is always full of up, up, up and down, so life is safe that there is hope. You can never satisfy everybody. Amba, Amba, <laughs> Alino, you are highly welcome. I'm gonna give me chop maker, chop small. Naya Naya Ono Let me ask you are all highly welcome <laughs> Noella, you want me to, to, to block you You are not welcome if, you are, if that is the tune you have let me a chop small, Let me a chop small, my 
from Batibo, from the incidents in Batibo, Emakuleta, the virtuous woman, as Joey Salud, Mkwen Boy, Lewis Yoka, Richard David, as Joey Salud, Fred Pona. Yes, I will vlog Noel when he comes up again. <laughs> Hilary sir, you are all highly welcome from Boston, Texas. Vera, now would I give the right name? Shaky Dev, Shaky Light. Julius Ambe. Today we are going to talk about the Mbia massacre. We are going to talk about the creation of the interim government back in Ground Zero. Talk about the report of the Changshu boys. We are also going to talk about the ATF Batibo saga. We are going to talk about the case for the IG. We are also going to talk about the Haiti solution report. So we have a lot of issues to present to you today. And we are going to put it as much as we can. Ambazonia Freedom, ma'am. Marcella Adkenji. You're welcome. You're all highly welcome to this platform. So, we have so much going on. We are going through ups and downs, highs and lows in the struggle. And people need perspective. You know, we have had a lot of conversation with a lot of people during this week, which I'm going to share. Achidi. 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 If it's a double, you know. <laughs> You're all highly welcome. So, I've been uh, thinking a lot uh, this, this few days about our struggle about what we are doing what we are trying to do Wati, you are welcome my brother <laughs> uh, glenn i don't answer you i don't talk anything but uh, you are highly welcome uh, bernard uh, Deep, you are welcome Elvis, Kuben, you are welcome very <laughs> well and for, if you are from Com, i throw you salute particular salute from Mutengene, I throw you salute. From Ekidiwindi, I throw you salute. From Mojok, I throw you salute. Miselele Tikopo, I throw you salute. Kumba guys and gay boys. Bamenda boys and Bakwa boys, I throw you salute. Shake me down. Shake me right. Shake me left. Are you club dancer? Please. I throw you salute. Ma for you, house there. I trace a lot. Eric Bobo. <laughs> Bobo, I trace a lot. Biko. Palazzo, I trace a lot. Power changer. They are damn strong. So. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the end of that uh, song. Uh, it talks about all you club dancer, a cheerful song to cheer us up. Because as they say in uh, Las Vegas and the Americans, they say in Hollywood, the show continues. Our struggle has to continue, irrespective of our lows and our highs. We are really in a low moment. But as they say, you have to go low to bounce back even higher. So a lot of things have gone through our struggle this week that I have spent sleepless night from Saturday right up to Monday. It's now 3 a.m. in Hong Kong time, and I'm up to make this presentation to you guys. I think about it a lot. Whether I, should I come up and say these things that I have to say, the things that I have to say, I think I have to say, and I made the choice I have to come up. Some few people were, have contacted me during the weekend and asked me why I didn't come up. And now I'm coming up in a very strange time. I've never had a show <laughs> at 3 o'clock in the, in the morning. So, but I'm going to have this show 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm going to present what I have to present to you, and you will be the judge. And I, the only thing I regret in life are the things that I didn't do. <laughs> and sometimes people say, and the girls that I didn't, that I didn't meet. So, that, but the only thing you regret in life are the things you didn't do. 
So the only thing I will have regretted in this struggle are the things I didn't say to the Ambazonian people, in particularly regarding the adoption of our president. There were a lot of things that came up during that time and a lot of things that we just discussed behind and we, we talked about it when he was going to America, when he came back and everything that happened. That was the biggest blow. This moment that I shared my first Amber tears. And uh, I, will, I have made up my mind that I will always tell the Ambazonian people what they need to know and keep things as, as classified, classified. But I will always make sure I put out things that I need to put out because most of the time things happen. And I always say, had I known, why didn't I tell it? And the few, the activists that are very close to me, and we talk about this type of things and we complain, I say, we should have told the people, this is thing that we should have said it early on. So I've made it my choice that I'm going to be telling you guys the things that I believe I need to tell you, including things that are just theory. I will put them out there, but I'm going to tell you this is theory. This is not theory. So today I'm going to talk about sensitive things that is happening in Ground Zero. I'm going to talk about sensitive things about the Red Dragons. I'm going to talk about the ADF, their conduct in Batibo, what is going on, the truth about it as a lot of people are counting on this platform to know the truth about what is happening in this struggle. So we have heard your, your, your request. We are going to do that. We are also announcing to the, to the public, Ambazonian public, that we are now doing out of public, uh, for, uh, public demand and, and many demand. We are also now doing an investigation, an analysis, and a report about the contribution people have made to other forums, other, other movements, including the AGC, Morisk, including the, the Sunday offerings of uh, Mark Barata. We, are, we have now decided to launch a, a, a comprehensive account, accountability of all the national groups, not only the interim government, but the AGC, Morisk, the, the activists who have collected money publicly, in, in particularly the, the, the money raised by Mark Barata, Comrade Mark Barata, and we don't want to put out there our opinion on all those things, but we have been very, uh, I, I want to say I'm very happy with the cooperation I'm having so far, and uh, we are very satisfied that we are going to give you a comprehensive report about all the other accountabilities of the other groups that you have been asking us to do. So we are going to do that. The reason why we, we didn't do that previously and why we focus on the interim government, it is because this forum, this platform, believe that the interim government is the vehicle, is the chassis of the vehicle to take us to Boya. That is our belief. The interim government was set up to function as the joint front, just like Skakup. Skakup was a common front for all the nationalist groups to push the agenda of the restoration of our struggle. So that is, what our, that is our belief. We believe in the interim government. That may surprise a lot of people who have been fed with a lot of lies and the manipulation and people saying that I am AGC, I am not AGC, my partner is AGC. Yes, of course, my partner is AGC, but he's an objective person. We already, he has disclosed his affiliation. He's currently not acting as an uh, AGC member because he had written a letter, a formal letter to the AGC before he joined this platform, informing them that he's going to be performing his duty first like an Ambazonia and an activist, but still uh, offering his services to the AGC when they need him. So we all offer our services to all the groups. We are independent. Like it or not, we are independent. A lot of people have tried to tag us as being members of AGC, not because, they know, because we are members of AGC, but because they want to distort our message so that when we, you receive information from us, you see it like we are supporting the AGC. Of course, I support the AGC's agenda because I see a lot of, uh, 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 it is pragmatic, it is attainable the way I see it. I've also supported, I support the interim government projects, but I also have, have raised my concern. I also have endorsed projects there. I support the projects of uh, Maurice and all the national this uh, movement that I believe they are doing their best according to their own philosophy to advance our, our quest for the liberation and the decolonization of our territory. So that is our position. So ladies and gentlemen, I will go right straight into our presentation. And for those who are in here, in case some subject might not be interested to you or interest to you, and you might want to go or stay, uh, you feel free to do that, but I'm going to give you a list of what I'm going to talk so that you know whether you can, how you can match up your time if you want to spend your time. 
to listen to me as well as I want to inform you that we are not very crazy about the amount of people that watch us or the amount of people that like or dislike us. For us, we are focused on the 1% because we believe that it is the 1% enlightened people. They're the 1% of people who are able to express themselves that usually carry the day in every revolution, in every movement of change. So we are going to talk deeply about what has happened with the ADF and the, the incident in Batibo, including the attack in uh, London. We are going to address that and what it means. It has raised a lot of deep issues within our struggle. Some people are asking, is it possible, is it allowed for a single person to be able to engage in a deal that concerns the resources of the entire Amazonia? People have asked a lot of questions about AGC and they, they, there have been a lot of fire coming out, people talking about the killings of people and stuff like that. We are going to put it in perspective and give you nothing but the truth to the best of our ability. We are also going to talk about the Mbien massacre briefly. We are also going to talk about a case for the interim government. And we are also going to talk about what we plan to talk about the most, which is the Haiti solution. Uh, you will surprise you that some people don't know what is the Haiti solution. And we are paying tribute to the Godfather, an Amazonian fighter who has dedicated his life, a young man who was killed not by a friendly fire, but an Amazonian group. For something they said that he was uh, uh, aggressing people collecting money from the road and things like that that was a justification given for his death but he was one of those fighters that adopted the haiti solution wholeheartedly and was committed to implement it holistically and since then we have been trying to push people talk about promote the ideology of the haiti solution a lot of people buy it but we have not seen the level of engagement that will satisfy us so we are going to relaunch the Haiti solution in a, a trilogy format, joining it with uh, the block-by-block -block theory of uh, Comrade Ayabacho, as well as the, the gorilla tactics of, uh, of, uh, of uh, Dr. Akwanga. We have learned a lot during this period when we have been advocating. We have learned from the, the, the actions on the ground, the effect of uh, Godfather's action, and, and we will present these things to you. So that is what we are going to do today. So I'm going to start with, with, my, with my presentation. And I'm going to instead start with what I pre prepared to start last, to talk about the case for the interim government. The case for the interim government. Why do we uh, need the interim government? And why the interim government? And why the interim government? Uh, if you look behind, and this, this topic is coming because of the result of the, the attack on uh, Chairman Ayabachu in London. A lot of questions have been re raised by our people in terms of, uh, is it right for a single leader to make a decision to sell or to get into agreement about our, our resources? I just want to tell people that, uh, just for, the, for, your, for your information, before we get into this topic, Dr. Ayabacho did not go to London to sign a contract. He went there, according to the images shown by those guys on their phone screen, he went there because Ambazonians in London call him and tell him, just like I, I call my friend, I tell him, say, oh boy, come for, for Hong Kong. I get company for Hong Kong. My company will introduce you for some company where the peace sign contract with you for give support for our, our people then, and then in exchange for our oil. So now, Ambazonia, they be calling me go for the. If you go for go meet up, they meet, they introduce him. You know, they go for go sign a contract with them because they know be telling say they get contract for sign up. They be telling say, come meet up with, we we'll get company. We we'll go introduce you for some company where you want sign contract with you. And contrary to the to the image, the the propaganda that was spread by those same people, Doctor Ayaba went there. He had a meeting with with some uh, Ambazonians of the AGC there. If you look at the video, you will recognize Roland in the UK, who is part of the AGC delegation that went with him. And when that issue happened, I also said on this platform that Ayabacho went there for a diplomatic mission. And I was right, because in his mind, when he was going there, he was going there for diplomacy. Diplomacy is when somebody goes to some, some place on behalf of a nation or behalf of a people to have some type of a deal or consideration. That is why I said that he went there for a diplomatic uh, mission. So I'm going to continue with my presentation. I want to inform everybody that I am not the spokesperson of the AGC. If you really want to get the AGC's position on 
specific issues, go to their, their spokesperson, who is uh, Comrade Tapang Ivo. I may say certain things here that will contradict what he has said, but I want to refer anybody for AGC's position. Please contact uh, uh, their spokesperson, uh, Tapang Ivo. What I do here is, uh, is uh, advocacy, is activism. It's not talking on behalf of any organization. Uh, somebody says it's not diplomacy. Uh, diplomacy, by definition, uh, Mr. Cross, is uh, somebody acting on behalf of a people. It's called diplomacy. Whether he was being pranked or not, but I know that he was going there with the intention for, to carry out diplomacy, military diplomacy. So that, that said, I will go straight into my, my presentation for today. Fellow Ambazonian, fellow Southern Cameroonian, this struggle that has taken so much life that a lot of our young people have died, have been killed, old people burned alive, is because of you. I want you to understand that this struggle is not a struggle about Ayabacho. It's not a struggle about Seseko Ayoktabi. It's not a struggle about Dr. Akwanga Ebeneza. Not a struggle about the activists or any organization. It's a struggle for us. It is your struggle. And I want to tell you that your opinion counts. Your expression of your opinion counts. Whatever will happen that is going to determine the conclusion of this struggle depends on you. It is a battle for your soul. It is a battle for your future. If you have been in La Republic du Cameroon for all this while, you may be under the impression that what you think does not matter. How you choose who you want to lead you does not matter because we have been for over 56 years without having any choice, without believing in ourselves. And it, no matter what you think, no matter how you study, no matter how, how smart you are or how stupid you are, you really don't matter. But I want to tell you, Ambazonian, that your opinion matters. That is why it is very important for you to get information. That is why you see the leaders are fighting what to say. That's why they want to silence certain voices. That is why they want to promote certain voices. Why? Because you matter. You are important. Your comments matter. The people you support do matter. To set the stage to present to you what I have to present to you, I will tell you something. When Jesus Christ was being killed, the, the population had to be convinced and they had to demonstrate and shout to, Pharaoh, to, 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 to Pontius Pilate, crucify him, crucify him. The same people who welcomed Jesus Christ into, the, into Jerusalem, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they could not stop Jesus Christ because of the population, their opinion. There were many times they wanted to kill him. They couldn't because of the population. And when the population turned against you, you are dead. You are dead. Even God cannot save you if you don't want to be saved. Even God cannot save you if you don't want to be saved. So your opinion matters. What you want as a nation, as a collective people, matter. Who you want as your leader, matter. It matters. It matters a lot. The Egypt, the, the Israelites, they were left to suffer in the desert for 40 years. And God said that all their generations would die. It is not because God did not want to deliver them. It was not because they did not have a way to freedom. Actually, God has already made up his mind that I'm going to deliver you. He has already given them authority to their leaders to deliver them. But because the people themselves, by worshiping a false god, showed that in their heart they wanted to go back to, to Egypt. God allowed them to suffer. There is a movement going on. There is a deliberate manipulation of the Ambazonian people going on right now, as I speak to you. One of the leaders that have been compromised, the leader that uh, Tassan Wifred, the deacon, our former president, the leader of the struggle, Tassan Wifred, had predicted that God has shown him and he has prophesied not just prophecy, but say by knowledge that our, one of our leaders is going to sell us out with the hope that he is going to use the money to deliver us. 
it is happening right now. And uh, activists, some activists are also involved. Are also involved. I'm going to tell you why I think the way I think and what I, what I think about what, what, what made me to come to this conclusion and the information that I have, I'm going to give it to you so that you should know. There's a movement called No IG, No Independence, No Restoration. No IG, No Restoration. That means that if there is no IG, there should not be any independence. The whole theory about this thing is that no IG, no independence, as was stated by one of our, our activists that you know already, I don't need to call the name. No IG, no independence actually means that they have convinced the Ambazonian people, they want to convince the Ambazonian people that without a particular person taking us to Boya, we should prefer not to go to Boya. The whole concept is not about the IG or not IG. The whole concept is that we can entertain the fact that we can go back to La Republic de Cameroon. That means some people have the idea that they can entertain it, that you can even conceive it, that we can go back to La Republic de Cameroon. It starts now small, small, now small, small that they take we go back. They will never come one day and tell us, let's go back. It starts by saying, if it's if na say day, better move go back to La Republic de Cameroon. This is the whole concept. They have tried divide and rule. They have tried everything has failed. And they have come up with this wise idea to embed, they call it inception, in the mind of our public. T start to tell people that it is better for us to go back to La Republic. It is better. You start by entertaining it. Entertaining it. Listening to it. Eventually, you are convinced that it is better for us to go back to La Republic to Cameroon. And don't think it is a mistake that people come and say it. You have heard, we have had suspicion, like right from La Republic to Cameroon, that some activists that we know are working for La Republic. We have received it with a bit of sword because these are people that we know them. These are people we believe in them. These are people we listen to. These are influential people. But we have received it with a, with a grain of salt. I'm going to give it to you so that you will understand. So, I will start by talking about the case for IG, the case for the interim government. Why should, do we need the interim government? Why do we need the interim government? First of all, the, the political demography of the Southern Cameroonians is prone to, to function only within a centralized system. The people of the Southern Cameroon, they, they are not comfortable to have more than one leaders or more than, uh, let me delete you, let me delete this guy. And once, once more, this is not a public uh, a forum. This is an advocacy platform for Ambazonia. If you really are here and you don't like us or what we are doing and you are here to observe us, you really have to behave yourself. Because if you express it in a way that is disruptive or try to distract my audience, I'm going to block you and I'm going to delete you. I really don't care whether you are an activist or not. I've deleted some people. There are some people I don't listen to. Because in life, you have to, you have, to have your space. We are fighting for something that we have to get dirty, but we have to have our space. So please, respect yourself when you make comments here. Respect yourself. Okay? Respect yourself. If you disagree with me, write it in a way that I can understand and I can respond to you. But if you insult, if you ever use any insulting word, liar, stupid, foolish, idiot, all these type of things, you are gone. I don't want you, I don't want to ever hear from you again. I don't want to ever hear from you. This type of people are not the type of people I live with in my private life. I'm a decent man, I'm a gentleman, and that is what I bring to this struggle. And that is what I hope to inspire. I don't want to create a, a forum or any space for cyberbullying or to promote hate speech. I don't want that. I don't insult people. I don't do that. So don't insult me. Don't insult me. I, I can take it. It will not hurt me, but I'm going to put you away from my life because I don't interact with people who are insulted. I interact with gentlemen. I'm a gentleman. Even when I want to fight, I fight as a gentleman. So that's it. Let, let's go back to, to our... Mami Grace, I throw you salute. Let's go back to our presentation. Why we need the interim government? Go back to our history. Every generation deserves to have an organization that captures 
its momentum and its mandate. That is the whole reason. If you go back to the period of the Southern Cameroon transiting into West Cameroon and eventually into the United Cameroon, you, you find out that those veterans and those civil servants who started the movement in Douala, who were resist the initial resistance that was led by the Godidinka, Nick John Fundi, and a lot of those people that follow him. And he eventually established uh, the, the Ambazonia concept in, in the dungeon of Kondengi. That is when he came up with the name Ambazonia in prison. And that is when he came up with this vision. And it captured its generation. He created the Republic of Ambazonia. And he created a government. It was recognized in the high court in Bamenda. And it is, was, was the legal representative of our people in uh, the, the Hague, in the United Nations. The Republic of Ambazonia was actually uh, recognized by America. The State Department of America actually created a, 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 a relationship with the Republic of Ambazonia. Uh, Gordi Dinka was actually recognized and appointed as an advisor to the Queen of England. So this, this, this government, which represents the Republic of Ambazonia, it is the legal government of Ambazonia initially. But other movement came up. After the, the movement for Southern Cameroon in the 90s, you had the, the All Anglophone Conference in Boya and the All Anglophone Conference in Bamenda. And those people, they were aware that there was an organization already. There was a, a government already representing Ambazonia or the territory of Southern Cameroon in the name of Ambazonia. But they saw it necessary to create the SCNC and create its leadership and its chairman to represent them to represent that mandate, that coming together of that generation after the failure of SDF. So we have seen it grown, and you saw the new generation, the young people of that time, the, the uh, Dr. Akwanga and uh, Dr. Dayabacho, uh, uh, they came up with the Youth League, a, a, a youthful, energetic people who are revolting, who, who could think differently. And they formed this organization to capture that moment. They were telling the people, we cannot just base on on uh, diplomacy and on the gentleman behavior with somebody who is a crook. And they, they, they captured that generation, that youth energy on that generation. And eventually they created the Abazonian Governing Council, the AGC, which is a government. Why did they create the AGC? They created the AGC because they know that the people of Ambazonia, they want to work through a collective movement. They invited, uh, I, I saw, in the, you can see in the pictures of Abacho, he invited a lot of leaders to his house in Norway. Dr. Akwanga, they did a wonderful job to bring a lot of those people together to have a, a common front. Because why did they do that? Because Ambazonian people functions like that. We want to function in a, in a singular movement. That is why they formed the AGC. So they formed it as a government. It has its minister, it has its own people, it has its own uh, department. They function as a government to represent us. And eventually, you have the common law lawyers who came up with Harmony Bogba with the case that finally governized and they created the, um, the Southern Cameroon uh, uh, Common Law Society. And that Common Law Society... <laughs> oh, okay, sorry, Mami Jera, you did disturb me. Let me ma, ma, ma do my presentation. The, the Common Law Society, the Abogbala, they came up and they formed a consortium. And they said, let's bring out all the, the civil society trade unions to present the issues that are pertaining to the Southern Cameroon's territory. And they formed that consortium. They were aware that they were already AGC. They were aware that they were SCNC. They were aware that they were all this other, other government. And when Tassan Wilfred, he decided to change the, the memorandum for, for the consortium, which was for, for, for federalism and separation, for complete decolonization and independence, he invited all those pioneering organizations the AGC, the SCYL, which was still functioning as together with the SCNC, the AGC. That's why they had a single signature for the two groups. They come together to create this, this uh, government, the, the SCACU, which eventually become the interim government. So the interim government concept is very important. The interim government concept is very important. That is why I think that the interim government is very important because that is how our people want to function. If you look at all the chat groups, you look at the survey, you will find out that people want to function through a centralized system. And, but it is not just about having an interim government. The centralized government, the interim government should represent the whole movement of the people. That's how people want it to be. That is how people want the interim government to be. 
And that is how it was designed to be. But in any case, the main point I'm bringing this narrative is because the incident in uh, London have made people to ask that, does any person or any organization have the right to get into a contract to sign about our resources in Southern Cameroon? Does any one person have the right to do that? To look about this, this question, does Ayabacho have the right to sign for our, our, our national resources? Ebony Black, you are highly welcome. Does, does Ayabacho have the right to go and sign for our, our resources? Does the AGC have the right to represent us as a government? Does any other government except the interim government have the right to represent us as a government? The answer is very simple. According to international law, according to the international law, which is a recognition of customary law and customary practices all over the world and expresses itself as international law. So it is a natural law. The international law standard says that any people, you know, it is, the, the problem has always been who is a people? Because under international law, people have a lot of rights. When you say you are a people, you have a lot of rights. You have a right of self-determination. You have the right of political association and a lot of rights. So, but we are lucky that we have won a case in Gambia that declared that we still remain a people. So we are a people. So every people in the world, they have a right of association, which is what Abobala did. When they came together, they formed the consortium. Pobia, the, the argument of Pobia was that you people don't have the right to represent these people, these, these Southern Cameroonians, because we are the government that has the sovereignty over this territory, so you don't have the right to even organize a group and call it Southern Cameroon. That's why they intimidate people in La Republic. They cannot represent Southern Cameroon. They can only talk about it in the regions. They, you can only talk about it as a region. But under international law, any group of people who are citizens and members of a, a people, they have the right of association. They have the right of organizing themselves to represent the interests of the group of people. So anybody, I'm an Ambazonia, I can I have the right to choose two or three people to gather ourselves and to gather ourselves, hold on, let me delete uh, this, uh, this, this guy, is uh, Amba Chai. We have the right to gather ourselves and organize ourselves into an association or an organization to represent our country. We have the right, every Ambazonian citizen have that right. The AGC have that right. The Republic of Ambazonia have the right. The consortium have the right. The, 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 the SCNC have the right to do that. They can represent us because they are citizens of Southern Cameroon. They have the right of association and organization. But the right to sign a contract, do they have a right to sign a contract? Of course, when you sign a contract, that contract is binding on certain terms. That means the fact that you can sign a contract does not mean that that contract will be respected or it will be binding your ability to sign a contract will now depend on the third party his assessment of you actually being able to fulfill that that contract S similar contract had been presented to seseko ayok tabi in europe and he had rejected it because he thought that at that time we are not yet exhausted all the the the, the peaceful means to attain our independence and he was of the opinion that judging from other african countries if you get into a contract like that, there is a danger that these companies will want to control the country and maintain a dictatorship there. So that is what has happened in a lot of countries. But if that was his judgment, I think now he might regret it. He might regret it. So as to the people who are asking, does Ayabacho have the right as a, the, the president of the uh, Ambazonian Governing Council to sign a contract on behalf of all Ambazonia? Yes, he has the right. But the fact that you can have that right and sign a contract does not mean that that contract can be be executed you can sign a contract it does not mean that the contract must be executed so it is two different things he has the right all of many of our leaders we even hear of 